if you listen to Gloria's short talk and you close your eyes, she talked about uh, economics and us, lost the holistic perspective. And you can say, well, what is Yasa about? About holistic approaches, about combining disciplines, getting out of the silos. So there is really so much in common. In April 2013, Yo-Yo Ma, one of the world's most famous cellists and arts advocates, said something that summarized the journey I had made without quite realizing it. Artists are trained to pay attention to the smallest possible detail, and this enables them to make sense of the biggest possible picture. For the past 19 years, I've spent nearly every day training the body to become a tool of expression. To communicate what words cannot convey in order to eventually start seeking out the truths in our world. That journey was painful sometimes, but also rewarding. And I'm only starting to grasp its destiny. So how did I end up investigating the relationship between the arts, economics, and the so-called irrational? I started drawing parallels between those worlds about four years ago. I was in my ninth season with a ballet company, moving up the ranks. People around me admired the tricks I was able to do. Yes, tricks I would call a high level of ballet technique because provided one possesses the physical and intellectual gifts, it has become nothing more than figuring out how to apply the laws of physics on the body. So here I was, making my childhood dream come true. And at the same time realizing that it had become meaningless unless I would find a way to apply meaning to the skills I now possessed. And then I, also a student of international relations and government, suddenly saw the bigger picture to my artistic crisis. It was just like the growth dilemma. We in the Western world had hit the limits of growth. It was time to change our outlook, time to start thinking about how to apply meaning. And while I was commuting between applying the laws of physics on the body and studying the changing world order on a daily basis, I became increasingly restless. I'd grown up in an ivory tower where I was told that it was our role as dancers to enchant audiences with beauty, to tell stories, to interpret the music. And perhaps this had been enough in the relatively quiet tech decades that had passed. But a new era had started. And wasn't it therefore also time for us as artists to start making a difference again? Didn't we need dance to communicate and mediate and economics to serve people and not the other way around? But while I, of course, had no idea on how to address the economic crisis, I did know how to tackle the artistic one. I left the structured company life. It's a crisis, I told friends, but a good one. Now I have to go and find a way to apply everything I've learned for the past decade. It didn't take much time for me to realize that the so-called contemporary dance world wouldn't offer a breeding ground for my visions. Highly minimalized movement-wise and perhaps even less concerned about communicating and mediating, it struck me as another ivory tower, just as the world of economics seemed to be split into believers in the status quo and anti-capitalists. I wanted to be a reformer, not a revolutionary. The world, I kept on thinking, is in a fragile state right now. We cannot afford a revolution, but we desperately need reform. So where did I end up? 
there had to be a middle ground. Amongst other things, I became Edith Schiele in the dance film Egon, which was financed by the Dutch government. The research process took me on an emotional journey back to my cultural heritage and also back to an era that could teach us so much about what could lie ahead of us. Then, one week after the film was a wrap, as they call it, I was back to academia. Economics in particular, since I was told that I had to take economics before graduating so I would understand how the world works. In the first class, we were taught that everything we would learn that semester was based on the assumption that human beings act rationally. And it was instantly clear to me, coming straight from the Aegon film set, that basing economics on that assumption was just as bad as applying the laws of physics on the body and calling it art. It could only be part of the story. It was obvious that this was going to be a semester of applied mathematics. And I was horrified that scoring 100 points on the final, simply by understanding the laws of demand and supply in the eyes of others, would equip me to understand how the world works. As soon, if anything, ask, um, solving hundreds of problem sets only revealed an even bigger question. If we're becoming a civilization that can only measure extrinsic value, aren't we going back in evolution, back to the state of nature, and aren't we giving up on the core of humanity, the ability to recognize value beyond what is directly in front of us? As soon as this semester was over, I embarked on creating a second work on Egon Schiele. So here I was, exposed to the rational in my academic and the irrational in my professional life, two worlds that now seem to be clashing in so many places we look.
Schiele is categorized as an expressionist, but really what I found in him during those two very intense research periods is above all a humanist. In the midst of the Industrial Revolution and onset of modernity, he, amongst others, here in Vienna, turned inward, searching for the essence as of humanity. And in the end, I believe he simply painted people how he saw them. I found myself asking that same question a hundred years later in the midst of the digital revolution. What is it that makes us human in this rational, data-driven age? Having the ability to be empathetic and having the courage to be vulnerable rather than perfect has to do with it. But my search for a more comprehensive answer continues. Both economics and the arts seem to have lost their holistic nature. Highly specialized, both domains which should be vital to our existence have distanced themselves from what has been their purpose for the most part of history, to serve society. And what used to serve us as a means to an end now has become an end in itself. I very much hope that in the coming months we will be able to advance the discourse on how to find our way back in order to move forward. Thank you very much for your attention.